just under 10 miles to the finish. Ellie, Jens Voigt and uh, Leon Van Von are the three riders going clear. And in fact, the man who's trying to chase them, but not with any great success, uh, is Anu Luto. And then further back at around about three minutes and three minutes, 15 seconds, we've got the peloton and they're under pressure from Andrea Taffy, who keeps on trying to break away. Excellent position there by Jens Voigt in second position. He's done a lot to pull back the attacks that have come from several riders when this at one time was a group of six men. The first big attack actually came from Anja Luta, who now is a little way behind these riders, some 30 seconds adrift, and hoping that they'll slow down as they come into the streets of Po, because he too would like to, to regain contact with the leading group of three riders. It's an ideal position for him. The reason he's done that is, in fact, he's wanted to force Lely into second place because he knows he's the dangerous man. As the time come down, comes down to 1 minute 44 seconds, Van Bon using all of his tactical knowledge keeping himself in third position but Phil you can see the average speed now on the onboard computer there with Jens Voigt is down to 38 kilometers an hour and behind you can be sure the main field is right racing along at around about 55 and there they are and they're all telecom boys on the front and they're trying to eat up the road I don't think there's enough road left on today's stage and to get across to these three they'll be inside a minute behind and that's for sure so time gains today will be negligible Voigt was the best place of this trio, 8 minutes 18 back off the yellow jersey this morning. At one stage, they were almost 5 minutes ahead, but that's all gone now. They're thinking only of the first prize in the Tour de France today. The man who's got back at the last minute before now on many, many occasions, in fact, classic races at that. And if Christophe Agnoluto is coming back, he might well go straight by them and snatch the result. Just under the 3 kilometer banner now. 10 seconds is Agnoluto, there he is now. He's really kept going over these last 15 kilometers. He was dropped because of the attacks by Voigt and Lely. And now he realizes his chance of a victory in the Tour de France is going to come back. He'll see the three riders and he'll only hope that he can surprise them. But there, Van Bon, always attentive, looks over his shoulders. He knows Agnoluto's there, but Agnoluto will go straight away. That's the way to do it, get back, hit them hard. They weren't waiting, they didn't know. And Christoph Agnoluto, who was a surprise, but very deserved winner of the Tour of Switzerland, which is a 10 day race last year has come straight back and gone by he couldn't afford to hook on and tell them he was there he had to hit them straight away and he's being chased down at the moment it looks as though it is in fact Voigt who's got across Voigt was the most attentive he was waiting for something to happen there and he went straight over the top as soon as he got to the back wheel of Agnoluto he decided to go but look at this Lely's got a lot of energy left he's nailing him back and that's the end for Agnoluto it was so close it was a brave effort he did exactly what he had to do but he just didn't have the legs where well, he'd wasted a lot of energy getting across but the peloton are now inside one minute from the finish a little flurry of activity will have helped to delay the capture and they might yet not see them until after they cool down across the finishing line in Po. But again, uh, it's Lely who is looking the strong man of this breakaway. And will he be the next to try? But watch out for the Rabobank boy in the orange half colours, Leon Van Bon. He is the sprinter and he is slowly observing here everything that is going on pushing all the time, making sure that Lely stays in front of him because he realises he's the man with the most reserves, having not done quite so much. Anja Luto, what a great man. <laughs> he's come back again inside two kilometres, but Phil, the main field, is at 55 seconds, so these guys can't mess about too much longer. They will see them very shortly if they keep this up. I don't know why it is. We always get some great finishes in Po. Kilometre remaining at the front of the main field. Pink and white, Team Telecom, they're looking out for Eric Zabel. They're realising now that there is a chance. They'll have the information coming from the team car, so they put the speed right up there but you can see in the leading group of four the two experienced professionals are forcing the younger man Jens Voigt he's only in his second year as a professional rider to sit on the front and keep the pace high Van Bon excellent tactics by him forcing Lely into second place he knows that Lely's going to be the first to go and he wants the lead out well that wouldn't surprise me if Agnoluto isn't the first to go and see just if anything comes from a sudden dash for the line uh, Jens Voigt is waiting for the move he knows will come he's riding him close to the barrier so the forces the attack to come over his left shoulder. He's first around the bend. We're into the square now. It won't be long before somebody must make a move. Angeluto looking as though he's itching to have another go. Whether he's recovered, I don't know. He's the last man in the line. Lely is the man who may give Coffer this to stage win. Van Bon has been totally quiet. He hasn't made a single move. He's sat there and watched everybody attack. He's borrowed wheels to go back up to the attacker. And he's waited for the last minute. That is very much a sprinter's style. 
Jens Voigt, who was a great amateur bike rider, now has a smell of a victory in the Tour de France. Looks over his shoulder, and Yaluto wants to go. He's itching, but he's waiting as late as he can. And now Jens Voigt opens it up for the line, followed by Lely. And Anjaluto is gripping on the back, but he's not going to make it now. It's going to be Van Bonn and Voigt here. Van Bonn and Voigt, and Van Bonn is just about coming to an end. Voigt is holding on. And my goodness me, just on the line, and only by the width of his tyre. Leon Van Bonn beat the very brave Jens Voigt. And there's the peloton right behind. And there was only 11 seconds in it in the end. Eric Zabel getting over there ahead of Robbie McEwen. So the Rabobanks Banks got first and second in the bunch sprint as well. A good result for them today. But what a great finish that was. Van Bonn. Leon Van Bonn, who came so close to a world title in the sprint last year. But then just as the line approached, watch the left of the picture. And just see whether the wheels in which order they hit the line oh my goodness me that is close uh, but it's always the way the rider knows when he's won and the rider knows when he's lost and the victor is leon van bon and look at the speed of the sprint today almost 68 kilometers an hour as they came up and lunged for the line leon van bon third in last year's world championships in three previous tours to france he dropped out of every one of them in this front group the telecom team uh, seems to have got most of the men into this league group as uh, jan ulrich also we must assume that o'grady has been caught off camera here because it looks to me as though ulrich is now trying to settle this for himself but i don't think it's himself he's gone too far to go one kilometer there is the kite he's trying to set it up for his man and that's going to be eric zabel another man going down the left hand side of the road here one of the francais de germain this could very well be Maximilian Chandry. Well, the idea for Ulrich, and look at the speed of him as he chases down the Francais de Jeu rider. He's trying to set this up now for his team man, Eric Zabel, the sprinter. And by the way, it's Zabel's birthday tomorrow. He's won a stage of the Tour previously on his birthday. But now they're looking over the shoulder. This is the downhill section. It's very, very dangerous indeed. As Zabel's trying to fight his way through and go for the finish now. Cipollini is not getting out of the pack here at all now. As Zabel tries to get to the line, Cipollini's trying to move up, but he's left himself an awful lot of work to do. As the rider spread right across the road now, this is the group that will write the news. Watch on the inside, the left of our picture, Cipollini tries to go up on the line. This is going to be a tremendously close, but he's got it. He has taken it right on the line with Tom Steele's right with him. And also was Federico Moncassin. They were the first three, and that man has done it again. Can you believe it? And this was where, and where Mario Cipollini came from, I really do not know, but watch out for him, you can't miss him, he's wearing the illegal shorts at the base of our picture in red of the Stars and Stripes of the United States because he rides an American bicycle. And just look at the speed of this man as he goes through on the right-hand side, Frédéric Moncassin is trying to get to grips with him, but it was a real tough struggle, and Moncassin that was never going to get on terms, Tom Steele, the champion of Belgium with the black top to his jersey, he's going to go for the Possible gap on the right of Cipollini, but once Cipollini gets the front, you'll never get by him. From the finish, so we've got the roundabout coming up, and then it's everybody full bore for the finish. There is the roundabout. Breathe in because it looks a lot, in fact, they've widened that since we drove down because they've actually pushed everybody way off the road to give them every possible approach uh, which makes sense because it is so dangerous. Anyway, they're all safely round and now about one and three quarter kilometers to go to the finish. TVM have got to the front, their man Jerome Blylevens, who is a great sprinter, usually takes one stage in the tour each year. So they're trying to bring him into position as well. There are so many good sprinters this year. Most magnificent selection of sprinters, the best fast riders in the world have come to the Tour de France this year. And it's amazing to see how much confidence each of these teams has in their sprinter. We've seen Batik Del Monte, we've seen Mape GP. Now it's TVM with just one kilometer to go. One kilometer to go, watch for the man in yellow. He's over on the far right of our picture, still a long way behind. Steels has come over to the far left in the green jersey. The white jersey just in front of Steels is Frederick Moncasin. He's trying to get through, but I'm wondering, in fact, if Cipollini has done it all wrong this time because they're all coming over the top of him. Watch the left of the picture, steals his poise too. We've also got uh, Bortolami trying to get out of it here as they're coming up to the sprint now. And Fabio Baldato also trying to get a lead out. Andrea Baffi for the US Postal Team is tucked in there as well now. 
as the big lead out is coming now. It looks as though Portal Army is trying to do something, but there's no sign of an example. No sign yet of the yellow jersey of Mario Cipollini. Robin McEwen, I think, also has thrown it off the ball. Here comes Cipollini now. Far right on picking Tom Steele just cross out of it there. As Cipollini, how does this man find his way through such a mess? As Starble goes on the far right with Cipollini on his shoulder. Oh, he's done it again. He's done it again with Eric Zorbel and Jerome Blyleben alongside him. That was the situation on the line, but I do not know how Cipollini does it. That man comes through on automatic pilot. Now let's have a look at that again because this was some finish here. Look at this. At this point as we look at the picture, there is no sign of the yellow jersey. And the same has to be said. There's no sign of Jerome Blyleben. Then start, Zorbel starts the run first at the bottom of our picture and then off the course virtually comes the yellow jersey of Mario Cipollini. He starts to go for the back wheel of Eric Zabel, then comes at second gear as he moves up onto the shoulder of Eric Zabel. And as Jerome Blyleben's best of the rest as he comes to over the top of them. And then it's into top gear because he's just drawn to that finishing line like it's a magnet. He is so, so quick. This will be his 16th win of the season, which means he has now won more races than any other cyclist in the world this year. And he comes straight up to the line. Zabel just gets second. Blyleben's third. And I guess that's Moncassin back there in fourth place. Some lessons from Mario Cipollini. 400 meters to go and he seems to be completely locked in the pack behind 20 other riders. But a good sprinter never gives up. He's always waiting and hoping that the gaps will appear. Like a gate that he'll try to keep open with his handlebars and his shoulders. It takes courage, daring and the acceleration to go through. Inside 200 meters to go the sprint begins. All the other riders are too scared to hit the front early and that's why Cipollini's the best. He has the power and the speed to come around the outside when everybody else in the middle falters. It's risky. Even when Zabel in the pink opens up his sprint, Cipollini has to choose whether to go left or right. He flicks his bike around the German's wheel, opens the gate up to the finish and powers away on a massive gear of 53 by 11. Unheard of by sprinters 20 years ago, but Super Mario is a sprinter of today. Big Mario, remember he's in a red jersey today of his team colours at one kilometre to go. We understand though he is injured from the crash he had earlier. As we now get an attack coming away from the group here. Yatislav Ekimov from US Postal, a normal and a late attacker when it comes up to the final kilometre of a race like this. But Mape GB want to keep control and Zabel now has moved up into fifth position in his green jersey. And uh, Vyatislav washed away there with the anxious sprint. Watch out though, because in fact Cipollini is there off to our camera with Moncassin. As Raul Sarza looks over his shoulder, we've got Zorba Moncassin and Cipollini over to the left, moving to the centre. Strasser is there as well. Has a lot of switching and balking going on in the sprint here now. As again, it looks as though Strasser is trying to open up the sprint here for a change in the centre of our picture. Zorba in green is coming, Cipollini off to our left now. Eric Zorba, Jamal Dinabdu, Jafarov on the far right of the picture as they come up to the walls of the line. Also, we've got Zabel looking right over to see if he's got it. It's going to be a very tight finish indeed as Blyleben's also comes. Zabel gets it on the line. Zabel will take it right on the line. Blyleben's, I think, got second. But that was a close one. But Eric Zabel, that was a superb finish by him. Abdul Jafarov was there as well. This is the big sprint finish today. Zabel had a good lead here. Jamaluddin Abdul Jafarov was coming up nicely in that red jersey. We've also got Nicola Minali in the blue jersey on the centre of the line. Then watch the approach here of the rider in the yellow jersey of TVM. This is Blyleben's coming up with a tremendous turn of speed from the depths of the peloton and moving very quickly onto the shoulder of uh, Nicola Minali and Abdu Jafarov and continuing to push on uh, to try and pick up the green jersey there of Eric Zabel. But I'm afraid that, that proved impossible. But at the end was just crazy. I mean, crazy, crazy. In the final 400 metres, there must have been five to six like almost I sw for sure big crash is going to happen I don't, these guys are sprinters and bike handlers and they held them up you know and I was going for it and getting ready to go and then Zabel just took a left hand turn just you know they go where they want so you got to put on the brakes and it's just it's nuts I mean it's 
It's getting way out of hand. Well, you can't really see why the judges had anything to complain about because it looks from this angle like a normal kind of a sprint. Eric Zabel comfortably in second position there, just waiting to open up the gas and go across the line and take another victory for him. However, once the race was over, the judges went back and looked at it from another position. This one, you can see the green jersey of Zabel. He's going across to get the slipstream of the man in yellow in with the head which the judges deemed afterwards was dangerous maneuvering and he was relegated to last position in the pack. Meanwhile, Adrian, on the other side of the pack, there's another fight going on between the Belgian champion Steels and Frédéric Moncassin in the white jersey. The two of those riders won the slipstream of Mario Cipollini. Moncassin nearly goes down. In fact, it enrages Tom Steele so much that he's looking for the Frenchman who he feels has caused him to lose the race. There's the Frenchman on the far side. At 40 miles an hour, he leans down takes a bottle and hurls it at the Frenchman. The judges said, sorry, that's not good enough. You're out of the race and out of the tour. For well, the finish, to begin with a fairly normal sprint, but then Rolf Sorensen in the orange jersey for Rabobank leaps across at 35 miles an hour to the opposite side of the road. First incident on the right-hand side, the green jersey of Zabel and Cipollini come together, bouncing off each other. The judges would let that one go, that wasn't too serious. But then Eric Zabel feels somebody moving by him on the left. He leaps across to that wheel because he knows that's the one he wants. But this is the incident they didn't like. He butts into the rider with his head there and they decided that was dangerous riding and they relegated him to last position in the pack. First man over the line, last in the pack and the victory was given to your own Blylevens. However, on the other side of the pack, something else was going on. Tom Steele's the Belgian champion, fighting it out with Frederick Moncassin in the white. Now these two riders want to get into the slipstream of Mario Cipollini. They're bumping against each other consistently. Nobody wants to give up, but in fact it's Steels who manages to go round, even though Gan Ryder Moncassin nearly falls off. Steels has lost his impetus and also his stability. He falls onto the shoulder there of Travisoni, but he's lost all chance of a win. He gets mad, he takes out his bid on at 40 miles an hour and hurls it at the Frenchman. That's what the judges didn't like. They said it was aggression against another competitor and they threw him straight away out of the race. <laughs>